Hello students, this is the part before midterm exams where I take all of the quizzes for you in front of you in video form where you get to see what the correct answers are and answer any questions you may have about why an answer was wrong in the past. So let's go ahead and start with chapter one. Begin. Which of the following is a political consequence in Texas <clears throat> due to the state's geographic size? Well, we know it's not well organized. Consistent loyalty to, no, we don't have consistent loyalty to the American federal government. Uh, uh, urban areas did not rapidly develop. The answer is B. What is an impresario? Well, Stephen F. Austin was an impresario, but an impresario is defined as an entrepreneur of settled colonies in Texas. So the answer is D. Question three, which of the following was not, not as underlined among the divisive issues leading to the Texas Re Revolution? They just were divided on whether they wanted statehood or to become an independent republic. No, they were fine with either, guys. Remember, uh, they were fine with becoming a state under Mexico, but they did not have enough people to get Santa Ana to give them that chance. And an independent republic was what was offered to them. So answer on that one is also A. Which of the following events closely formed, followed closely the form of the Republic of Texas? Sam Houston was elected president. Texas statehood in the United States was, was delayed by the issue of slavery, strongly supported. No, remember it was James K. Polk, guys. Resulted in popu massive population growth uh, for Texas once annexed. Yes, it is both A and C. Reconstruction in Texas met the demands of the radical Republicans in Congress when? Immediately? No. By the passing it, nope, that would have not met uh, the radical Republicans' demands. The Con uh, Constitution of 1866, remember guys, this was the one that was punted back because it didn't ratify um, uh, the 13th Amendment. So, Constitution of 1869. Black codes for which type of political culture? Remember, um, first of all, there is no progressive political culture. There's individualistic, which says that the government exists to uphold uh, individual rights. There's moralistic, which says that the government is, exists to uh, promote the moral good. And there's traditionalistic, which just says that the government exists to uphold the status quo. Since the black codes were laws that were intended to keep uh, newly freed slaves disenfranchised, that is keeping the status quo. That means the answer is D, traditionalistic. Hey, which of the following was not, was an area of change, sorry, was an area of change in Texas era of reform? Railroads, we got the Texas Railroad Commission. Alcohol, we got prohibition. Oil, spindle top. Answer is all of the above, guys. In Texas, during the Great Depression New Deal, which the following did not occur. Texans voted for Roosevelt. Happy O'Daniel was elected. Many farmers lost their farms. The booming oil industry spared Texas from the effects of the Depression. No, as you guys remember, the booming oil industry did not spare the Texas economy the effects of the Great Depression. What happened was oil was being overproduced. It went down to three cents a barrel. That was a problem. So actually the Texas Railroad Commission had to come in and um, shut down um, over a third of the oil fields to keep the valuation from, you know, go, becoming even worse. Supply and demand is basic economics. So question 10. Which of the following is an example of the institutional concept of social welfare prevailing over the residual concept of social welfare? If you guys remember, the institutional concept of social welfare says that social welfare programs should just be a part of life, just be an institution part of life, like social security is just something you're automatically enrolled into, um, and public schools are not considered shameful, um, and then residual concept is that these are, these are things that you should not do except if you have no family, no local community. It should be a safety net. It should be temporary. should be something that people don't live off of. So when did the institutional concept, the more liberal concept, prevail over the residual, the more conservative concept? Bill Clinton's reform of welfare from long term, that's institutional, to temporary aid to needy families, that's residual. So the answer is A, guys. All right, save and submit. Yep, I feel like I did pretty good on this test, y'all. 
Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so let's move on to the next quiz. That was your chapter one quiz. Let's do your chapter two quiz. Let's begin that one. Starting here, you had two attempts, so I'm hoping that things did better. Okay. Um, where the U.S. Constitution is blank and blank, Texas is what and what? The U.S. Constitution is brief and flexible. Texas is long and detailed. Question two. Where blank federalism addresses the distribution of power between the national governments and state governments, Blank federalism, other kind of federalism, is at the state government level. Uh, between national and state is going up and down, that's vertical. Uh, between state to state and government to government, that's horizontal. So the answer is A. Question three. All the following descriptions of power under federalism are correct, except power to tax is a concurrent power. That is correct, because states can have taxes just like the federal government does. Power to coin money is a concurrent power. Oops, nope, concurrent means con, together, current. They can do it together at the same time. No, each state cannot coin their own money, so the answer is B. Question four, states generally prefer that the federal government provide the money in the form of block grants because they, A, provide the most flexibility in how the money would be used. There's definition, no, that would be a categorical grant. Uh, bring it, nope, nope, nope. The answer, of course, guys, is A. If there's any questions as to why these answers are correct, let me know on the question board and I'm happy to explain further. Most of you got these right. The Texas Constitution creates a governor who has a great deal of influence over the legislature. Actually, no. Is the chief executive of the state? Mm, remember, we have that plural executive thing, is very weak, is more powerful than governors. Can't be either one or the other. The answer is very weak. Our government, our governor does not even propose. He has, he or she has the right to propose a budget. They never do, it doesn't ever go anywhere. Uh, what makes a governor strong in other states is that budgetary power. All that the governor of Texas has budgetarily, that's a word, <laughs> is the line item veto. Okay, question six. Popular sovereignty manifests itself in Texas in the following way. Popular sovereignty, remember, is the will of the, the popular vote, the popular people. The appointment of judges, nope, that's not, people don't do that. Lack of term limits, actually, no. Um, mm, I would say election of citizens to state office. All of these offices are part of the plural executive except, member of the plural executive is governor, land commissioner, attorney general, comptroller, ad commissioner, secretary of state, Speaker of the House, guys, is not an executive, it's a legislator. Question eight, initiatives and referendums are two ways to do what? Amend the state constitution. Concurrent powers include all the following except taxation. We've established that both states and the federal government can tax. National defense, regulating business, remember there's interstate and intrastate commerce. Infrastructure construction, that's both state and federal. So national defense is a national issue. It's an enumerated express power. This constitution prohibited the emancipation of slaves by either the state legislature or individual slave owners. Which one would that be, guys? Remember what happened when we had, um, basically at this point, slavery was such a big deal when it came to um, uh, the secession of the Texas from the United States and joining the Confederacy. 1972 obviously is not true. 88 was after the Civil War. 1886 is after the Civil War, so process of elimination. So that's your chapter two. Oh darn it, am I really that late? Okay. So let me move on to the next quiz. Let's take this one. And by the way, every one of your midterm exams will be different from your classmates. 
you will get a random set of all of these questions uh, that uh, Blackboard generates for you. And your midterm will be timed, guys. So that's why you actually have to study this. You will not have time to look it up. You actually have to know it. Uh, you will have about a minute per question. And that is so you, I'm not interested in how quickly you can look up things in your notes. I can't prevent you from looking at things in your notes. I actually want to see how much you know this stuff. So let's begin chapter three. Okay. Which of the following is a basic characteristic of the Texas legislature? Meets one regular session a year? No. Nope. Unicameral? No. Nope. That's Nebraska. Governor may call special sessions. Very good. Regarding typologies, which is Texas? Texas in a citizen legislature, professional legislature, or a hybrid or an executive? First of all, there is no such thing as an executive legislature. I made that one up. It is a hybrid because, and we'll actually get there. I think one of the questions is why is it a hybrid? We'll answer that in a second. The theory of representation that holds that elective officials are agents of the majority who elected them to office, and thus they should carry out to the extent possible the wishes of the majority is which model? Delegate model. They have been delegated to do what the majority wants them to do. Texas legislative elections in the general cycle choose a plurality winner. What is a plurality winner? No, it's not the majority. That's a majority winner. One must win more votes than any other opponent. Major justification for the bicameral legislature is that makes it more difficult for majority to abuse its power. It's traditional, makes it easier to represent different interests because one camera is simply not of cameras. I can't, obviously I made that one up. The answer is A. We don't want um, regional interests of the majority to overwhelm the interests of the state. That's why senators are elected by a statewide popular vote and representatives are elected by district. Demographic representation tends to go along with which theory? Microcosm. Microcosm is the theory that says that if 51% of the population is female, 51% of legislators should be. Uh, that we should have a demographic representation that matches uh, the demographics of the citizenry. The drawing of district boundaries for legislative districts in the Texas legislature must follow the rule of one person, one vote. They have got to be equal uh, or people are underrepresented or overrepresented. A bicameral legislature Bicameral, two chambers, upper and lower, okay? Texas legislatures, le legislators are rewarded for their service with average pay, no expenses, no pay, only expenses, high pay, no retirement events. No, the answer is low pay, but high retirement events. This is what makes us a hybrid. Um, paid low, but those pension benefits are very, very high. Texas has length term limits for the state legislature. Texas does not have. All righty. So let's get to chapter four. We are halfway through this review. Standing committees in the Texas legislature engage in oversight of the executive branch. How do they do that? Because there's a national distrust, natural distrust of, of executives among the members to assure procedures, standards, and regulations developed by agencies follow legislative intent. Because executive staff mostly by political appointees. And because constituents demand and reward it. The answer, guys, is B. Standing committees. Uh, exists to handle basic standing business procedures and standards and regulation. What proportion of the legislature must be present to fulfill a quorum requirement? Two-thirds majority is a quorum. Which of the following is the mechanism in the Texas House to allow representatives to run out the clock? Well, the Texas House and the Senate are two different chambers, so we know it's not that one. Blocking bill, nope, writer. Answer is chubbing. It's a Texas phenomenon. Who chooses the chairs of the Texas Senate committees? Lieutenant Governor, most powerful position in Texas, according to um, 
well, it's pretty much considered consensus on that one. Which type of committees is charged with research or oversight in between sessions? In between, in terim. What is the purpose of an emergency clause of proposed legislation? Nope, you cannot prevent the possibility of filibuster. Nope, you've got to have the votes for it. Makes the governor's signature unnecessary? Nope, governor's signature is always necessary. Makes the bill take effect immediately upon passage because it's dealing with an emergency. Normally it's 90 days, typically it's September 1st that a bill goes into effect. Question seven, which of the following will most likely be given highest priority consideration in the House of Representatives? Remember, even my constipated girlfriend looks really cute. Even is emergency, M is major state, so there you go. Power in the Texas legislature is concentrated in the caucuses, no. Heavily concentrated the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate? Yes, absolutely. Of all the following statements concerning the President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House, they're all true except both appoint members are standing. Both are elected by membership. Oh, no. Remember, the President of the Texas Senate is actually the Lieutenant Governor. The Lieutenant Governor is elected by you. The Speaker of the House is elected by his fellow, his or her fellow uh, representatives. Question 10. Of all the following statements concerning organization in the Texas legislature, they're all true except the Speaker of the House and the President have a substantial amount of power, that's true. Both state budgets prepared by the Legislative Budget Board, that's true. Party caucuses are increasingly unimportant, no, that's, that's not true. There are, in fact, special caucuses that operate in the legislature. So there are your answers for that one. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to chapter five and six. The Texas Constitution lists this as grounds for impeachment of the governor. Treason, sounds bad to me. Bribery, sounds bad. High crimes. Nothing. The Texas Constitution is silent on grounds for impeachment. That's true. There is no specific grounds for impeachment listed in the Texas Constitution. Question two. The blank is first in line for succession of the office of governor of Texas. The answer is lieutenant governor. Governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, comptroller, ag commissioner, land commissioner, secretary of state. That's how it goes. Grizzly lesbians attack children at local schools. I did not invent that. That was one of my classes but it works, it helps you remember that line of secession. A pardon can be granted by the governor only if the case is recommended by the House, Attorney General, Lieutenant Governor. Nope, it is the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles, which is actually uh, the people that sit on that board are appointed by the governor themselves, maybe not the current governor, but a governor. The governor's most significant source of influence over the judiciary is power to appoint replacements. Yes, A is correct. The rest are not. Senatorial courtesy requires that the governor treat members of the Texas Senate with proper respect. Any gubernatorial employee must have the, the approval of their own state senator. The party and the incumbent senator must not oppose their nomination. Senators treat the governor with proper respect. Guys, you guys remember? B. The blank is often considered the most powerful position in Texas. Yep, Lieutenant Governor. Question seven. Which of the following is appointed by the Texas governor? The Texas governor has one appointee. The rest are elected. That is the Secretary of State. Who is solicited for advisory opinions on the constitutionality of proposed actions? That's easy. That is the Attorney General. The Texas Executive Branch has blank statewide elected offices. We have established that one is appointed. So the governor is elected, Lieutenant Governor, um, Attorney General is elected, Comptroller is elected, Ag Commissioner selected and Land Commissioner selected. So out of the seven seats in the plural executive, six of the seven are elected. Which of the following is consistent with a merit-based system rather than a spoils or a patronage system? The governor appointed campaign supporter? No, that would be spoils, that would be patronage. It's just hiring technical employees based on their education. Yep, there you go. Campaign workers filling staff positions, that's patronage. 
contracts awarded to fundraisers, it's also patronage. So the answer is B. Excellent. Now let's go to seven, because I know many of you had questions about seven. And I think some of those questions have to do with issues with audio. So I'm happy to answer those questions right now. The highest civil court level. Court of Criminal Appeals, obviously criminal. It is the Supreme Court of Texas, guys. Texas highest appellate court level. It's an appeals court. Supreme Court of Texas, Court of Criminal Appeals. Uh, has jurisdiction in municipal areas, may have a judge is directly appointed. It is the Court of Criminal Appeals. It is both criminal and appellate. Appeals baked right in, guys, right there. With the exception of municipal court judges, all judges in Texas are elected in partisan elections. I believe that there's a bullet that explains that. The court's jurisdiction defines that court's sphere of authority. Question five, court with original jurisdiction hears only, remember, original jurisdiction. That's not an appeal, that's initial. It can be initial civil cases or criminal cases, but they're initial cases. Criminal cases involve individuals who ask the court to resolve an issue. No, it might not be criminal, and individuals don't bring charges. Guys, remember, it's the people of the state of Texas that bring charges. Do for damages, no, but that's not a criminal thing, it's a civil thing. C, charged with violating the laws of the state. The party alleged to commit the wrong in an issue is called the, the party who, who is alleged to have committed the wrong is the defendant. The plaintiff is the person that says they have been wronged. The party claiming to have been wronged is the plaintiff. Compensatory damages. You're just trying to compensate people for money they lost. Punitive damages. So this was the question you had questions over. Monetary rewards to restore the individual party. Yeah, but I'm looking for larger money. I'm looking for this one. A lot of you got this correct, but the answer is both B and C. I have a feeling that you guys were looking at the PowerPoint but not listening to the audio because of the technical difficulties. The answer is D, both B and C on that one. So I hope that answers your question. If you guys see this question on your midterm, which there is a chance you might. And let's go to the last quiz, which is not a quiz. Um, I did this for you guys for extra credit. Um, it's just a review. These answers are already answered for you in your last lecture. But let me go ahead and do that for you here as well. This is about the recent lecture, the last lecture before your midterm. Which of the following is least likely to be capital murder according to Texas law? We all know that. We all wrote a paper about staying your ground, castle doctrine. Murder of a retreater in your home. Which of these explains why death penalty cases are more expensive than other trials? And the answer is you have to appeal. You automatically are appealed to the High Court of Criminal Appeals. And um, this costs money, it's a transaction cost issue. What are the two methods of execution that Texas has employed since 1923? Lethal injection since 1982. Between 1923 and 1982, it was the electric chair, except for a brief time when then there was a nationwide moratorium brought on by the Supreme Court. The recent focus on rehabilitation over incarceration will be an option which like most likely for what offenses? Not rapists. We incarcerate rapists. We incarcerate people who commit armed robbery, human trafficking. The answer is drug use. We rehab them, we treat them. According to the lecture, what has been the primary motivation behind the 2007 move to work toward emphasizing rehabilitation? And it all comes down to money. All righty. All righty, so I've gone through and made sure that um, my answers were correct on all of them. So I didn't mislead you. I knew for a fact my answers were correct. I wrote this quiz. Uh, but nonetheless, I want to make sure that I didn't accidentally um, 
miss key anything. So I've gone back through and I have got 100 on every one of these quizzes. So I know that when I was putting in the answer key, I, correct, I chose the correct one. And that therefore, if you chose the correct one, you will get the correct answer. So if you guys have any questions about the content, let me know. And I hope you guys do really, really well on your midterms. Have a great week.